Hello everyone, today I'm reviewing the 1.5 kilowatt auto tuner from MFJ, which is the MFJ998. This antenna tuner is fully automatic and I bought it at the Dayton Invention about uh, three weeks, a little bit more than three weeks ago. And I've been using since then. If you didn't, didn't see my video about the unboxing of this unit and as I explained why did I choose this unit, well go go watch this uh, before. But today what I'm going to do is the complete review of the unit. I'm going to reset it and redo the configuration. The first thing I did when I plug it in, I thought it was like, it's a tuner, you know, plug and play and that's it. But read the manual. There's a lot of page in that manual and you need to read your manual to understand correctly the tuner. And also read the manual of a radio because there is information on how to use this tuner. And what happened is when I, uh, I post my unboxing video, I did post it on QRZ.com on the forum over there. And there were some people, you know, saying that they were very happy with this unit and there were some people that they were not. And I think I can associate, you know, maybe the bad luck that people had that maybe it's related, you know, to how they set it up and everything. I did the same. I opened up the box and I put it there. I thought it was plug and play, but that was not the case. It didn't work probably at the beginning. So I said, okay, I'm going to read the manual. And I read the manual and I've been using it for about three weeks. Flawless. No problem at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the connection that I did in the back because I need to... To, to, to have the cable a little bit longer because it was too short and it was like, in, you know, it was showing in the back and that's what, what I, I didn't want that. So what happened is that I, I use a Ethernet cable as an extension. So, well, you can see it now. So, uh, and it worked, there's no problem with that. So you can use it. And uh, what I did also is uh, uh, set it up, uh, everything with the radio. So let's proceed with the complete review. So we'll, we'll go through the menu, what I did, the setup and everything. And uh, we'll be back at the end for my final comment. The first thing to do is to get the manual because there is no paper manual in the box. So you just go on mfgenterprise.com website and do a search on MFJ998. Then select the antenna tuner. And you will find a little bit below, which is the download area. You can also find the firmware. Mine was already at the correct one or the recent one. Just download the PDF and open the manual. The manual is about 56 page. Uh, please take the time and read it. There is a jumper called jumper one that needs to be on for every radio except ICOM. And it's supposed to be there by default. Mine was not there. So I will show you how to, to do that uh, later on. So look at the manual. So you have all the menu here. And also the back of the, of the tuner. What you can see is the TX relay port. It's important to pass your radio to the, the amplifier into there. And you have all the connection. It's important to put also the 13.8 volt external. Not only from the cable MFJ. 5, 5, sorry, 5114 from K, K for Kenwood. This is the cable I use for my TS990. This provides power, but it's not strong enough, so you need to put an external power as well. Also verify your radio manual. Mine saying exactly that it's used the AT300, and that is can be simulated by the MFJ998. Also use antenna port 1 in order to work. So that's very important. As you can see, here's the jumper one. So just put the jumper. I didn't have any, so I made one. So sorry, didn't clip. There you go. Now you have the jumper is on. So that's inside the box while I have it open. So you can see all the relay over there. So it's quite noisy when it's tuned. That's normal, so don't worry. And uh, that's all the relay is working. Try to getting the best match as possible. So that's the inside of the tuner. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to reset the tuner to make sure to show you that there is no memory. And I'm doing a complete reset while holding C up and tune and power on. And say yes, air. 
There we go, and we're gonna go do all the, the, the setup at the same time. So, let's turn it back on. Okay. So, you just push mode, and you can switch between different type of view. Okay, so I prefer this one, but oh, there's a few ones, so look at the manual. Hold it, two seconds and more, and then you're in the menu. So you have the target SWR, I put it to 1.0, okay? And bypass and bypass tuner, well, lower it up. You can lower it to 1.5 if you have a, a, a transistor uh, a power amplifier. You can have the meter range, I led to uh, auto. That's the memory for antenna 1A, since it's on that one. The radio interface. Now, I will select Kenwood AT300 for my TS990. And that's about it. That's about what you need to do that for me. Anyway, that, that's what was important. So, like I said, read the manual and check it out. So, it is configured. So, now when you push mode out, you need to turn off and reboot. When you turn on the tuner, it will ask you to turn on the radio. Always turn the tuner first. Okay, that's in the manual as well. So make sure that your radio will detect the tuner. There you go. And in my case with the TS990, this is replacing the internal tuner. If you do not do the selection in the menu of the tuner, and if you uh, do not put jumper one, it won't work. It will work with the tuner button, but it, you will have the internal tuner working at the same time. This is not a good idea because this was create mismatch. So now my radio is booting. Sorry for the delay. And then let's go on. Hold on. Okay. On 80 meter. And there's no memory into the tuner because we reset it before. Let's put it right here. My antenna has a good match over there. So there you go. It's tuned. That's it. You just push the button. You can activate, disactivate the tuner while pushing the, the tune button li like the internal antenna tuner. There you go. Another match. Sometimes it's a uh, one kilohertz offset of the frequency that that's not not too bad it's okay you know just uh, doesn't have to be precise but uh, sometimes it is well most of the time it is so let's go on 40 meter i'm still on 1a if you can see on the display of the tuner 1a is my 40 meter 80 meter dipole antenna and 2a is my you see it just recall the memory so you just hit a switch Recall the memory again. Okay. So now let's go on 20 meter. And it's going to tune my 40 meter, 80 meter dipole. Oh, without the problem, 1.0. So now let's switch to my antenna, my Yagi, which is the 10, 15, and 20 meter beam antenna. This should be better, yeah. And it has memory for each antenna port so each antenna you see you're calling there you go so let's go back on this let's tune again it there it goes we call the memory that's it so now let's go on 15 meter do the same thing there you go easy okay on 18 megahertz I don't have any antenna but it's tuning my 10, 15, 20 meter Yagi without any problem. There you go. Okay, so now let's go on 10 meters. My antenna is as a match around 28,500. So it was a little bit high. There you go. That's it pretty good it's actually it's very very good very uh, at the beginning I didn't add the, the jumper on I didn't know it. I thought it was there by default and uh, it was uh, not working as well as we as it is now so that's important that you read that you read your manual so okay let's try to tune 160 meter okay for the record, my MFJ962D was not able to tune my dipole antenna. 
uh, on my 80 meter dipole antenna on 160 meters. So I uh, was not able to use it. And I don't believe this one will find it anyway. <laughs> so try again. 5 to 1, that's not very good. Nope. Okay. So let's go back to 80. Ding, that's it. We have the memory recall. And that's good. It's pretty good. Don't know what you think, but let's tune 15 meters on my dipole antenna on 40 meters. Yeah, there you go. Very easy. But usually we, we get a match there anyway for that band. It should work for the tuner. Then, then we switch back to the uh, beam antenna and tune again. You can fine tune manually if you want with the C up, C down, and L up, L down. Okay. So, and then you can rememorize it if you think you can do better than the tuner. I did once to do that and uh, it worked well. On, so my amplifier is on, I tune it up, and there you have like 1250 12, watts. So that's pretty good, and you see. You can tune there you go and what it does it use the bypass and it, do, it don't key the amplifier when you tune okay so that's why it's uh, very important to use that port in the back and have it uh, bypass to make sure that everything works properly especially if you have a transistor amplifier so as you can see I'm very happy with it it's working very well you need to do your connection properly, read the manual, take your time, make sure you understand and then you will get the result that you're supposed to. It is a complex unit if you look at all the menu options you have in it. So, you know, and you need to set it up, like I said, properly to in order to, to work as described. So, do I recommend this unit? The answer is yes and very happy. Maybe I would have loved to that it can memorize antenna from band so it can switch, you know, between the two antenna automatically when you tune. Maybe in a firmware upgrade, we'll never know. But uh, other than that, uh, what can I say? Very happy. Thank you very much for watching. Put your comments in the comments below. And if you have one and you, you have an issue, please uh, go back to your manual and check it out. Uh, maybe there's nothing you can do, but maybe you can. So. After I did that, everything went fine from my side, so uh, hope you like it. 783, catch you some other time.